morning. And this will as well. If an elderly person's memory starts slipping, what do you do? How can you make sure that vital information, like a list of critical med medications, is readily available? How about a high-tech chip? Even if that chip is something you'd normally find on pets, not humans. It's a debate sparked by a real-life experiment about to get underway. And John Berman has more. For the families of Alzheimer's patients, it is a nightmare scenario. Their loved one gets separated or lost, ends up in a hospital with no way to tell doctors who they are or what is wrong with them. It happened to Emerson Moran's wife, Pat. Pat was not able to tell them where it hurt, what was going on with her. Uh, she couldn't give them information about her meds or medical history. That's why this Alzheimer's Center in Florida is launching a trial program to implant 200 patients with this tiny microchip. It gets injected like having a shot of medicine in the upper right arm area by the tricep. The chip itself lies dormant. There's no power source, there's no battery, there's no energy. So nothing's going on underneath the skin. The chip has a 16 digit identification number. It can get scanned at a hospital and when the number is put into a database, it can provide crucial medical information. Having this type of uh, ID and having this type of technology to get the kind of assistance that they need right away is life-saving because our patients are so fragile and vulnerable. It is the same type of chip that has been implanted in pets to help identify them when they are lost. But critics argue that humans are not pets and privacy groups staged a vigil outside the Alzheimer's Center to protest what they see as Big Brother branding. This is a very invasive procedure, and unless someone can give full consent, then it, it, it's really a violation of their body and their bodily integrity. Emerson Moran says the protesters should butt out. If it's your wife or if it's your mother, uh, you want that information available to the right people. Now, critics say that bracelets might be a better option, but the problem with bracelets is patients can sometimes rip them off. Now, this microchip, which you can see is only the size of a grain of rice, clearly a patient can't rip that off. Yeah, right. but who would be a part of this experiment, John? It's 200 people in one care center in Florida. It is only patients who are either cogent enough to make the decision mm -hmm. for themselves or people for whom their legal guardian has made that choice, the same type of choice they'd make about any medical care. So those are the only type of people involved? Yes. All right, John, thank you.